I saw someone actually said that one of the state governments on the left coast, um, seriously, what was it I just saw? I was actually talking about um, sheltering in place until September. September. Um, I, I guess they think that's actually realistic or possible. It's not, but um, yeah. So we're all we're all where we we are. Um, and um, oh, I didn't turn off the notifications on that one. Uh, <laughs> my uh, my phone and everything is going ding da ding da ding da ding da ding. And well, actually, I should have. Uh, there shouldn't be anything dinging through right now uh, because do not disturb is on. So, um, oh, well, well, we'll see what happens with this. Anyway, I, I do feel that it's important uh, before we get back to a, another topic to um, honestly recognize that the conversation is not going well amongst Christians. Um, our world has changed fundamentally over a very short period of time in a way that almost no one could foresee given the circumstances. I mean, there had been a tremendous amount of preparation, great desire on the part of many uh, for a fundamental change uh, in Western society, which always has as part of its goal a uh, doing away with the remnants of a Christian worldview that are stuck in law and tradition and, and things like that. And yet the, the, the trigger hadn't quite been pulled some things I think had gotten in the way. And now all of a sudden along comes one of the many coronaviri. Every common cold is produced by a coronavirus, has been forever. And we've never been able to cure the common cold. I mean, that used to be the thing when I was a kid, you know, the, you know, when will we cure the common cold? Well, we haven't. And that, and by the way, the reason it's called Corona COVID-19 is from 2019 when it was first identified. So if there is a variant, a new version this year, it'd be 20, it would be COVID-20 and then 21 and then 22. And, and the reality is there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of coronaviri that could be out there. I saw one article that said that in ice core samples from northern China, that they had found, uh, you know, all sorts of uh, different types of coronavirus that, that if the ice caps melted, would be released into the atmosphere and, and so on and so forth. Um, so there you go. Uh, so uh, yesterday in the morning, uh, officials in Florida arrested Rodney Howard Brown. Now, I was somewhat, again, reminded of how old I am when I mentioned this to certain people in my family, and they went, who? Yeah. Had no earthly idea uh, who Rodney Howard Brown was. I had to go back, and a lot of the laughing revival stuff I found was from 93, so you're talking almost three decades ago. So, okay, 30-year-olds would be going, what? Yeah, wouldn't have any idea. Um, Rodney Howard Brown made a laughing stock out of the gospel, literally, by being the primary character in what was called the Laughing Revival, where uh, allegedly the Spirit of God, when he came upon you, would cause you to just start laughing at everything. You just... You would just laugh and laugh and laugh, and you'd fall down, and you'd roll around, and just laugh and laugh and laugh for, for a long period of time. And this was supposed to be a great move of the Spirit of God. And so most of us who have at least a few Orthodox bones in our bodies um, have less than 
warm feelings about Rodney Howard Brown and the disrepute he brought upon the gospel and continues to do so. He's never repented of that silliness. So for a lot of Christians, it was like, oh, Rodney Howard Brown, who cares? Um, doesn't matter uh, because I'm not a heretic like Rodney Howard Brown and he's just getting what he deserves. Here's the problem. I was recently uh, looking at some uh, police documents that had been released under the Freedom of Information Act and things like that. And uh, one of the things that I picked up from reading it is they don't care what your theology is. Uh, they do not make theological distinctions between glaringly different perspectives. They don't care. Uh, never really have. In the book of Acts, you see uh, political leaders who, when faced with the uh, distinctions between Jews and Christians on the person of Jesus or the law or whatever else, I, I don't, you, you got, you all deal with that yourself. Um, I'm not interested, but you all do this. So, so we have a long history of government not caring whatsoever about the theological distinctives. And so I'm very concerned that there have been many Christians who have just sort of laughed this off like Rodney Howard Brown, who cares? And Rodney Howard Brown was a, is a, into conspiracy theories and stuff like that. And so you have this idea that, well, they may come after Rodney Howard Brown. I mean, he's got a charismatic mega church, and but he's way off in, in the in the bushes theologically. But he's not gonna come after, you know, my church or you know, when we gather for Easter worship or something like that. And that's where I'm concerned because obviously. Uh, a lot of people are not seeing that precedents are being set right now. And the precedents are based upon, well, there's, there's an emergency right now. There's, there's just this huge, massive emergency. Um, and if this was like the plague and was threatening to wipe out half of humanity, okay, uh, it isn't by any stretch of the imagination, the plague. And... If you haven't noticed that the narrative is being controlled and directed one particular direction, that you're not allowed to go, you know, there's just all sorts of conflicting information here. There's a lot of inconsistencies. And, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. So, so everybody who doesn't just automatically um, take what Caesar says at face value and Give up your job, give up your savings, give up your house, uh, give up your future, give up your rights, your liberties, your freedoms, everything in the Constitution, and all for the common good. Or <laughs> then when Caesar starts quoting the Second Commandment from the Holiness Code in Leviticus 19, um, then you really know something's up. <laughs> when, when Caesar's quoting from anywhere near the same section that says two men shall not, 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 not lie together as a man lies to the woman, you know something's up. You know that they've decided, oh, hey, this works. Let's quote this. This works. So if, if you can't see, because of your detestation of Rodney Howard Brown, that precedents are being set here. And if you can't see that what's being done is, is, a, is, a, is a major test, how far, can, how far will these people let us go voluntarily based upon our introducing an argument to them that they then buy? Then I just don't think you're seeing what's going on. And you shouldn't let Brown's status uh, hide from you the reality um, that you have de Blasio in New York saying, I will close 
down churches and synagogues permanently. Not for now. That is the government saying, we will destroy you. We will take you out permanently. Um, that happens to be then happening at the same time that all around the world, allegedly elected officials are taking this opportunity to do all sorts of other things, not just enrich themselves horrifically, like in the United States with funny money. Um, but I had a friend in Australia right this morning and already trying to get a gun in Australia is next to impossible. The ones they've allowed, they're taking them away now too. That'll solve COVID, right? Disarm people. Bunch, bunch, of, bunch of mayors, I think in Illinois, doing the same thing. Uh, and why? Why are they doing this? Well, if you, if you see it, the populace is willing to give up all their rights in promise for some type of safety, which, which they don't actually promise. Have you noticed something? There are actually places where they're letting prisoners out of prison. Have you thought about that for a second? Um, if you can't keep a virus out of a prison where you have 100% lockdown capacity, what good does it do to put people in houses where you don't have 100% lockdown capacity? And isn't it obvious that the worst place you can be is in an enclosed, recirculated air place for viral infection? I mean, that's why they're letting the prisoners out. <laughs> this is dangerous. Isn't that what you're doing to us? Uh, and and so, so the British bobbies are using drones to track down people that are going for walks in parks. And you, you, you're, you're like, this is really happening. And there are a lot of people in society going, yes, do it. Let's encourage this. Let's get behind this. And I just want to go, why do you think this will ever end? Oh, but it will. This, the, the numbers will get out. How do you know? Who's telling you the numbers? And once they've started this, why can't they go, you know, we saw a real drop in, uh, in violent crimes and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we should probably just keep doing this. And you're just left going... Yeah. I wanted to, uh, we, we finished the show on, on a sad note last night. And I wanted, oh, yes, yes. I wanted to recap a little bit what I learned later on that was actually quite refreshing. Yeah, it was. And that is when I actually read the governor's stay at home order, and it is an In order. The state of Arizona. State of Arizona uh, through April 30th. Republican governor. <clears throat> effective five o'clock tonight. With the exception, exception of essential activities, under this policy, essential activities, and I'll keep this short. Yeah, you need to keep this short. Yeah. Essentially, essential activities include obtaining necessary supplies, engaging in activities essential for health, caring for a family member or a friend, even a pet, engaging in outdoor exercise activities constitutional brain okay <laughs> as few as they may be anymore yeah engaging in constituting our rights and he's asking us to use our heads but that's but that's that's where a lot of people especially californians who are beaten down yeah. by the socialist yeah. government yeah. of california all the time yeah. there are a lot of californians and californian christians um who go what the Constitution says is not relevant right there, now. There's some Stockholm syndrome going on. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. There what, really what it, is. But it's, that doesn't and, matter. And they, guys in California, you can get mad at me for saying that, but you need to check your brain and recognize there is an, a panic that has been imposed upon you that isn't reflecting the reality of the situation. You may you look at us and say, uh, we're not dealing with reality. No, we are. We you are. can't say that right now. I don't want this. Do you want this? You I don't want it. You can't you can't say that right now though. I, I don't I'm telling want it, you. I'm but telling you. 
you know what? I also want to be able to use my own mind and and thoughts. I don't want the government seen as my babysitter from cradle to grave, because it's not. It's just unloving. Just unloving. Well, I can hear it now. Um, you know, well, what are we supposed to do? I'll, I'll uh, other than you know, I will guide. Yeah. I will. I will allow them to go according to their conscience and then ask that they do the same with me. So, in the midst of all this, um, A, I, I would say the arrest of Rodney Howard Brown should be something that we're taking note of and watching very closely, uh, especially what's going to happen. I mean, this has to stop eventually. Uh, attach this picture with this information, but it wasn't by her. It was an article by N.T. Wright. And the article in Time.com, Time used to be a magazine. For those of you, who, uh, it used to be a big magazine. Yeah, a magazine. Yeah, they. Yeah, go to the. Well, don't bother going to the grocery store. Never mind. Um, important magazine, one that you actually wanted to read. This was before the internet. <laughs> the internet killed most of that stuff. Um, but the article is titled "Christianity Offers No Answers About the Coronavirus," and I remember it was. Um, it's James Anderson, I think. I think it was James Anderson who initially posted it. And that's when I looked at it for initially, and I was like, I don't know who this woman is, so I'm not really good, overly concerned. Then I find out that it's N.T. Wright. And as I've said many times, N.T. Wright strikes um, many people in the United States as this conservative thinking type fellow. When in the in England he's known as just being your standard Anglican, bright, insightful, but your standard Anglican, who, um, according to at least one American scholar, identifies inerrancy as that silly American doctrine. And so you read this depressing article, and it is depressing, and you get an idea of just. You know, God was grieved to his heart, Genesis declares, over the violent wickedness of his human creatures. He was devastated when his own bride, the people of Israel, turned away from him. And when God came back to his people in person, the story of Jesus is meaningless unless that's what it's about. He wept at the tomb of his friend. St. Paul speaks the Holy Spirit groaning within us, and we ourselves groan within the pain of the whole creation. The ancient doctrine of the Trinity teaches us to recognize the one God in the tears of Jesus and the anguish of the Spirit. It is no part of the Christian vocation, then, to be able to explain what's happening and why. In fact, it is part of the Christian vocation not to be able to explain and to lament instead. As the Spirit laments within us, so we become, even in our self-isolation, small shrines where the presence and healing love of God can dwell. And out of that, there can emerge new possibilities, new acts of kindness, new scientific understanding, new hope, new wisdom for our leaders. Now there is a thought. And, you know, earlier it talks about the category of lament and how there's lament in the Psalter. And there are psalms where you have lament where there is no resolution, where the, the psalmist laments evil and does not come to a conclusion because he's still in the situation. So lament is a valid uh, biblical category. But to say that all that can be said about coronavirus is lament shows that someone does not take major portions of the Old Testament revelation and the book of Revelation uh, seriously. Because clearly you have presented in the Old Testament the utilization of disease and plague as judgment from God. Um, Deuteronomy 28 and 29. It's right there. I think there is a uh, deep discomfort on the part of many people to consider the possibility of judgment. And we know that it is very 
common for someone to say, well, if there's an earthquake in such and such a place, it's because the people there were sinning about such and such a thing. Well, unless you have a prophet from God in the Old Testament style of a prophet, uh, that would be very difficult to prove. When God brought plagues upon Egypt, uh, we're told why. When God brought plagues upon the people of Israel, we're told why. Uh, but what we have to try to do is walk that fine line. And many people have just jumped over to the one side. The scriptures say that God's wrath is being revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, those who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. That's ongoing. It's happening. So God's wrath is being revealed. There are many, 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 many people who call themselves Christians that do not and will not believe that God's wrath is being revealed. They will not believe in a wrathful God. I don't know why you have a cross, but that's another issue. Uh, but when you, when people are asking, well, why would God allow this? The one answer that one part of the answer that cannot be presented by many, many people because their theology is it is the wrath of God against blood guiltiness in Western nations and in, in all in nations all around the world. Blood guiltiness, the, the, the shedding of innocent blood. And once you, once you arbitrarily shut out so many aspects of God's character, because well, mankind doesn't like that. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear that God has wrath. Well, they know that God has wrath. They're just suppressing that knowledge. Um, this surprised me, honestly, from... My conversation, the, the conversation I had with N.T. Wright on Unbelievable a number of years ago, this surprised me. Uh, I thought he had a somewhat higher view. Um, it, it didn't just surprise me. It disappointed me, is, I guess would be the better way to put it. Um, and as was said by others, it was very, very unhelpful. I have not, I have only seen a few articles. Um, there are some out there. Uh, but I've only seen a few articles that are really recognizing the nature of this situation and um, striking a proper balance, I think, in looking at what Scripture says. I am uh, very concerned about what's going to come out of this. Like I said, it, it has to end eventually. You, you're going to have riots in the streets if you do not allow people to work. Uh, eventually people go, wait a minute, I have to be able to eat, okay? And I'm not just going to live on the crumbs that you're going to hand to me. Um, what are you people doing? And so it, people have got to figure out there is a limitation on this, um, a real limitation on this. And um, But once that, let, let's say there's a time we actually, quote unquote, get past that part. Though flu season will come next year, and it'll come in November, December, and there may be a new coronavirus, because there are many of them, and if we respond the same way, we're done. Just get used to poverty, get get used to a, a an overtaxed uh, medical system, um, no more medical research, no more research in space, nothing, just... Pfft. We're going back to the, we're going back to the, you know, bring out the dead uh, level of stuff. Uh, it's just, it's just not possible to do. Um, but if it ever ends, there are going to be some really challenging conversations within what might have been a somewhat unified evangelical Christian perspective until the past couple of weeks. And... Very little of that conversation has been handled real well. There's a lot of nastiness. Um, and a lot, and 90% of it comes from the emotion. It's, it's emotional thinking, emotional thinking, emotional thinking. It's panic. You don't, you don't respond well to being challenged when you're in a state of panic. Um, that, when you are in fear of your life, you do not respond well.